know what? They would murmur in their tents. They would murmur against God's spokesman to them, the man who gave them God's word to them, Moses. They murmured against the prophets of Israel, okay? They rejected God's word through Moses and the prophets. God couldn't work in them and through them because they rejected his word through their, their spokesman. When Paul says that God will work in you and you're to do all things without murmurs and disputings, he means don't murmur against God's spokesman for today, the Apostle Paul. See, God, the way God works today is through his word. And unless you receive God's word through your Apostle Paul in Romans through Philemon, he cannot perform in you, okay? So the thing is to soften your heart towards the word of God, rightly divided, obeying what your Apostle Paul. That's why he tells him right after that, do all things without murmurings. That's complaining. That's, that's having doubt towards what Paul has to say. That's unbelief. In the same way that Israel did with Moses and they suffered the consequences and God could not fulfill his will in them. If you're a member of the body of Christ today, someone who's trusted Christ, when you murmur against the things that the Apostle Paul wrote, it hinders God performing and working in you his will, okay? All right. One more verse. Look at Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul, he was a Pharisee back in time past before he got saved. He was very religious. He was a religious Jew. These Jewish people, they had the law. And look what Paul says as he thinks about God working righteousness in him. Verse 9, Philippians 3, verse 9, and be found in him, that's Christ, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. Paul says, hey, I know the law. I was walking in the law, but that's self-righteousness. That's my own works. Not, not, the right, not, his, not Paul's righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ. See, hopefully your Bible version, if you're not using the King James, that may not say of Christ. See, the issue today is the faith of Christ. It's what his faith has accomplished. Jesus Christ's faith made him obey the will of his father when he walked this earth perfectly and go to a cruel and criminal cross, Paul says. God honors the faith of his son, the perfect faith of Christ. And when we put our faith in his faith, his faithfulness to go to Calvary, God accepts it, okay? Look what he says. To be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, verse 9 of Philippians 3, but that which is through the faith of Christ, and he's going to define it, the righteousness which is of God by faith. You see, my friend, faith is the only thing you can do without doing anything. The Galatians, they started off by faith, and then they got back under performance-based acceptance trying to work to please God, saying, God, look at me. Look what I can do. And God says, hey, I couldn't receive your works before you got saved, and I definitely can't receive your works after. It's always what Jesus Christ has accomplished for us, okay? Now, let's go back to Galatians chapter 5. Look at verse 6. Galatians chapter 5, verse 6. Paul says, For in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. You know, my friend, back in Paul's day, this is probably the first epistle he wrote early in the Acts ministry. If you, watch, if you look at the book of Acts, the book of Acts is not for you to build your doctrine for your church. If you have a church or if you're attending a church and on their doctrinal statement, they built their doctrine, whether it's from Acts 2.38 or any place in Acts, it's not for you. The book of Acts is part of Israel's program. It explains the actions of the apostles. That, that word acts, it's called the actions of the apostles. They just shorten it. It's the actions. What you see is them in motion and acting. You see Peter, James, John, Paul. Well, it's to explain the fall of Israel and salvation going to the Gentiles. That's the purpose. As a Jew would read the book of Acts, he would wonder how come God stopped dealing with us and is now among the Gentiles. Well, the book of the Actions of the Apostles explains that. After Acts 15, you don't see Peter and, and that Jewish ministry. It's all about the Apostle Paul. Think about that. From, from middle of the book on, it's all about the Apostle Paul. Why? Because God changed the program. And so that's what's going on in Acts. And early in Paul's Acts ministry, look what he says. He says, circumcision availeth nothing. Acts 15 Paul goes to the Jerusalem council, 
the issue there was whether Gentiles should be circumcised and keep the law. Circumcision was a, a covenant that God made with Abraham and his seed, Isaac and Jacob, the nation of Israel. And every male child on the eighth day was to be circumcised. Now, the circumcision of their foreskin of their flesh was a type of cutting off the flesh. Now, that was to Israel. These Gentiles were not part of that circumcision covenant. What God is doing today is purely based on pure grace, not because of a covenant, but because of grace, okay? No covenant. God didn't have to do it. He just chose to do it out of the goodness. He's gracious, okay? Well, there were Jews who followed Paul around as he went to the Gentiles and says, hey, if those Gentiles trust Christ, they have to be circumcised and keep the law. And Paul contended, he says, no, you don't have to be circumcised as a, as a, a Gentile today. Circumcision availeth nothing in Christ. He says, look what he says. For in Jesus Christ, if you're in Christ, if you believe that Christ died on the cross to pay for your sins, whether you are circumcised, availeth anything, nothing, doesn't mean anything, nor uncircumcision. What matters then? But faith which worketh by love. Circumcision in time past was part of the law of Moses. It was a religious outward external work program. Now, today, it's baptism. When you see circum what, what's the big issue today is not so much physical circumcision like it was in time past, but it is water baptism. And Paul says the same thing. Water baptism, it doesn't matter if you get water baptized today. There's only one baptism for the body of Christ, Ephesians 4, 5 says, and it's a spirit baptism. 1 Corinthians 12, th verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 17 and 18, Paul says, God, Christ sent him not to baptize. Christ did send the 12 apostles to baptize, and one day they will in the future. But today in the dispensation of grace, water baptism is not required for salvation. <laughs>